inshallah he will also speak so inshallah we will get started so jazakallah for coming here he is the imam for west valley mosque and he has been running lots of many programs there with that i will hand it over to shaykh uh, imam bakri jazakallah khair Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Take this pathway open for anyone to talk to each other. They should not feel. Um, a call from your brother. A call. I was talking to someone from Al Masjid Al Aqsa, and I told him I was coming to here, and he said, "Extend my salam to the Indian Muslim brothers and sisters and tell them we are with them." Takbir. تكبير تكبير الله, الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا We, They are uniting us They are pushing us back into our faith They realize more than us it seems how beloved Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is to us سبحان الله سبحان الله It is unbelievable that wherever there is an attack on the Prophet وسلم, immediately in the same place, in the same place, in the same time, there is an attack on Muslims, on their freedom, on their existence, as if, subhanAllah, our name and our existence is tied with the name of the Prophet. And I what an honor. to have our name connected to the name of Rasulullah. Thank you for giving us that opportunity, but no thanks. You know, this is subhanAllah, 1400 years later, in a place that was unknown to the people of Mecca. Here we are, in the new west. They thought the most west was Morocco, so called it the west, Al-Maghrib. That's it, there's no more west. Where we are in the new Al-Maghrib. <laughs> And we are on the new west coast. And still, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Is still rising up every day. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. So, I have traveled to India three times. Alhamdulillah. And I saw Muslims there. And I saw how they hold to their deen and iman every day. Every moment. And they try. They use any occasion. to bring back the youth to Islam, to bring back their community, whether it's the event of the birth of the Prophet وسلم, then the next day they do something called Yomus Sahaba. So the next day then they talk about the Sahaba alayhim. You know, so they keep anything, the day of Eid, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, and they're trying, subhanAllah, and what is their crime? What's their problem? وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَن يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيمِ They hold nothing against them except that they believe in Allah, Al-Aziz al hamid Subhanallah, brothers and sisters. We had our moment. We had our moment. And our moment was a thousand years. A thousand years. After a thousand years. After a thousand years. For every one Muslim in India today, there is five Hindus. After a thousand years, even if you put Bangladesh and Pakistan back with India, For every one Muslim, there is two Hindus. Number one is, subhanAllah, a thousand years. And a thousand years, we coexisted. Their language is still the same languages. Their food is still the same food. The local race was not replaced by another race. When you go to India, you don't find Arabs. You find Indians. They find their language. I ask people after 500 years, name for me one Native American dish. One Native American dish. Name for me one Native American piece of cloth. Name for me one Native American language. Name for me one Native American religion. Or any of the name of the God or gods or the spirit that they were worshipping. Even many of them worshipped one God. Name for me, where, where are the Native Americans? You have to go to museums to see them. 500 years. Multiply the 500 years by two, 1,000 years. All over the world, name for me, I am an Arab. I can name for you 10 Indian dishes. 
I can name for you every piece of cloth that the Indians wear, Muslim or not. All the languages are still there. You can name, you know, Telugu, you know, Telaga, you know, all the languages. I know them. I can name for you the name of their religions, some of the names of the idols that they worship. 1,000 years, double the amount. And they're still there. We had our moment. Do you know how long our moment? 1,000 years. Who united India? Who created the idea of India? It was Aurangzeb. And the India that he created and united is larger than India today. There was no India. There was 50 kingdoms spread around the place. He, he's the one. If you talk, want to talk about India, then let's talk about who created India. And then, after all of that, you come and say, 1,000 years. Well, my dear brother in humanity, you had a moment, you didn't even finish 10 years in power, and look what you're doing. We had a thousand years, and you are still surviving and thriving, and we called you our brothers in humanity, and we never pushed you against your faith, because a thousand years is enough time to convert everyone in India to Islam. True or false? True or false? True. After a thousand years, you can't even handle 10 years in power. You haven't been 10 years in power. And you're calling that you want to convert back every Muslim. So if you want to lecture us about history, learn your history as the Sheikh, the young brother here. May Allah reward him. This is a Quranic reading. May Allah reward him. MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair. Very well said, very well done. So my dear brothers and sisters, we're all connected and we all want goodness for humanity. Just like a thousand years passed by and we didn't kill our neighbors, we didn't force them out of their homes, we didn't push them out of their religion, we, didn't, we had enough time to do that. And that's why the same thing, that's the only thing we're looking for, because that's what our deen teaches us. Now show us what your deen is teaching you. This is what our deen taught us for a thousand years, enough time for a million tyrants to come and destroy India. But yet after a thousand years, Still, India is full of Indians and full of Hindus, and that's their choice. So, my dear brothers and sisters, teach your children what I have just said. Let them walk with their head high. We are the, historically, we're the people who saved other minorities. Even today, go on YouTube, don't take my words, and look at Jewish historians, and look at their YouTube videos. They say the best places that Jews lived historically were under Islam Khirab. Don't take my word for it. Don't take my word for it. So what, we've treated the minorities the best. We've given them freedom even to rule their neighbor. We call it autonomy. We give them autonomy to rule their own with their own Sharia in their own places. Something that no one else can dream of today. So subhanAllah, my dear brothers and sisters, at least the lesson as Imam Abdul Malik, may Allah reward him, always he gives us the goosebumps when he speaks. Subhanallah, the, subhanallah, the more you attack the Prophet sallallahu the more people are learning about the Prophet and converting to Islam. Exactly the opposite of what you intended. And this is Fadlullah sub Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're here to work with our neighbors. We're here to, wherever we go, we want to make the place we are a better place. A securer place, and 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 a more enlightened place. That's our seerah, and that's the seerah of our dear and beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. 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 Jazakum Allah khair wa salam Thank you so much for that motivational speech, Dr. Alam. One, one, one uh, small announcement. There is a very young boy who has written this, and uh, his mom has asked me to read it out. It was his, you know, work which he has done. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our honor. Let us all say it was his, it, it is his wish that everybody should say this slogan also. So let's do that. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our honor. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our honor. The Prophet is our pride. The Prophet is our pride. When he is slandered off, we won't hide. We won't hide. We won't hide. We won't hide. Jazakallah.
Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Uh, now I invite Dr. Khalid Siddiqui to uh, say a few words, inshallah. Let him sit down. Let him sit down. Excuse me. Let's clear the way. Assalamu alaikum. This is the part. Let's clear this part, please. May we all please clean the path, please. Please move move away because we don't want people to. And, and even on this one, try to be on the grass, okay? قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ Surah number 3, verse number 31. Number one message is, if we truly love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let's, our actions show it in our day-to-day -day behavior. And what is our day-to-day -day behavior? Amr bil ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. Share the beauties of Islam, share the beauties of Quran, share the beauties of the seerah of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> with the non-Muslim. If you don't do that, they are not going to know what is the status of Prophet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His status is وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He was raised as a mercy for the entire universe. And every single Muslim is a distribution center of that mercy which is in the ideal of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I had three stories for you, but let me tell you one small story because of the time. Thumama ibn Asal, a mushrik and pagan, he came to Medina, holding a sword in his hand, shouting, Where is Muhammad? Where is Muhammad? Where is Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So who was there? Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu anhu was there. He got hold of him. He sent the message to the Prophet. Prophet, peace be upon him, came with all his companions. And he saw Thumama is tied with the rope. So Prophet ﷺ, the first question, why did you tie him? Umar Farooq radiallahu surprised. Ya Rasulullah, didn't you get my message? This person came to assassinate you, to kill you. Sayyidina Prophet Muhammad said, untie his rope. He untied. Then Umar Farooq was surprised for the second question. Prophet asked him, did you offer him any food and drinks? Sayyidina Umar Farooq said, Ya Rasulullah, did you get my message? The man came to kill you. You want me to reward? So he looked around. Next to him was Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He said to Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, go to my apartment. Let them milk the goat, bring me the fresh milk. The fresh milk was brought. He gave it to Sumama. Sumama drank the drink, milk because the favorite drink of the Prophet was milk. After he drank, he said, yes, yeah, Sumama. Oh, Sumama, you don't know me. My name is Muhammad. I am the son of Amina who used to eat dry bread with cheese. Ever since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen me for this mission, I am a messenger of Allah and I'm teaching people how to be decent to each other. I teach them five pillars of Islam. I teach them the high value of the women in the society. I teach them jihad doesn't mean holy war. I teach them jihad is your personal struggle to reach the highest point of excellence in your knowledge and in your behavior. And he gave the full introduction of Islam to Thumama. And then he asked him, oh Thumama, do you believe in one universal God? Because Islam is founded on Tawheed. Tawheed means one universal God. 
one universal humanity with the freedom of choice and one universal divine message which was conveyed by all the prophets and messengers. So he said, no. He said, do you believe me in a, as a messenger of God? He said, no. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, you are free to go. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had grudge in his heart for any non-believer. He would have flown his head with his own sword. He did not do that. And he let him go. What happens? Everybody dispersed. After a couple of hours, Sumama shows on the door of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Ya Sumama, what brought you back? He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of God, when I came to Medina, I hated no one more than you. But when you presented Islam, the way you presented, the way you treated, I love nobody on face of earth more than you. You presented the message of Islam. It was convincing. But I did not accept it for two reasons. One is, I wanted to see what will be my end if I say no. The second reason, I did not want to accept in that pressured setting where hundreds of people were around me. I wanted to say it without any external pressure. Now I had no pressure, so I came. And I say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka ya Muhammad Rasulullah. That he declared his faith and said, You are truly the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Labbaq ya Rasulullah. 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 Two more points. Islam allows us protest, demonstration as long as it is peaceful. In Islam, in Islamic legal system, Freedom of speech is exempted from three things. Hate speech, blasphemy, and defamation. Anybody want to see any society with the freedom of speech, if you exempt those three things, then the citizens of that country will have love and compassion for each other. My address to my Indian brothers and sisters, non-Muslims that don't jump to the conclusion. Don't jump to the conclusion. Read your own holy books and read Islamic holy book Quran. Read the biography of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You go to Manu Samarthi, that is their holy book that tells us that their God Ram married Sita when she was six years old. We're not discussing it. There are thousands of examples. I'm not going to go into the details that Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was 17 years old when the marriage was consummated. These are the background, historical background. But my, my one more, the last point is I want all the non-Muslims, I invite them. If you don't want to read Quran, if you don't want to read any Islamic thing, go to the non-Muslim scholars. What do they have to say about Islam? One last example, Michael Hart is an American scientist. He wrote a book, The Best 100 human being in the history of the humankind. He gave number three to Sayyidina Isa radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, while he is a Christian. You see? And he gave number one to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, no one, but no one can take the number one place in the history other than Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of two reasons. One is Islam teaches deen and dunya. 
It is not a religion where, t where people become fanatics, no. It has the same activity for spiritual guidance as for material guidance. Number two, the Holy Quran. He said, I checked the Holy Quran. I learned the Arabic. I went throughout the world. Not a single letter or vowel sign was changed in the Holy Quran. It is preserved. So if you don't want to read that, read your own philosopher. What they have to say about Islam. The Prophet truly came to the world to give them the mercy. And every Muslim has to extend that mercy to every non-Muslim. That is our message. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Jazakallah khair, Dr. Khalid Saab. Uh, I want to sincerely apologize that I told you for only five minutes, uh, not realizing, but it was so inspiring. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for those inspiring speeches. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> just want to, it's not ending, I'm, I'm just telling. So, uh, Indian American Muslim Council is an advocacy organization which has been working from last 20 years and we have formed this organization at the time when Gujarat happened with the slogan of never again. And we have always been warning that there will be a time if we do not take, uh, you know, specific actions, then, you know, we may be treated as second class citizens. We are, we are moving there. And now you see how the attacks are happening. I request each and every one of you who is here to please talk to Brother Javed here. He is the chapter president of Bay Area. Please volunteer because this is the time we need you. We need masses. We can come out and do the protest, but if we are not strategic in our approach, and there is a lot of work which is happening behind the scenes at Capitol Hill, inshallah, we are planning to even introduce a resolution. Today morning, I, I came to know that we are going to introduce a resolution in the Congress about the human rights abuses which are happening in India. Inshallah ta'ala, once there is anything which you see coming out as a request to sign a petition, do an action alert, come out and for, for the protest. Protest is just one thing, brothers and sisters. It's not going to end here. Okay, this is just the start of it. We have multi-pronged strategy to take care of these Hindutva folks here. Okay, and we are working on it. So please, I request all, all of you to please contact Brother Javed, Brother Motashim, Brother Majid, I see there. Give your names and contact numbers because we have to go and talk to our elected representatives here that they cannot sit quiet when we have given them our vote. They have to raise their voices against what is happening in India. Are you all with me in this? Please raise your hand if you want to volunteer and come forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters. I don't want to take much of time because there is a lot of other speakers. Inshallah, uh, at last I will ask Javid Bhai to, to talk. But before that, we are having the privilege of having another Imam, another Sheikh here, Dr. Rajab Ali. Dr. Rajab Ali, please come here and say a few words here, please. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Muhammad al-Rasulullah. I am here, we are here to make, to draw a line. Brothers and sisters of humanity, we draw a line for politicians. We draw a line for artists. What a politician can say, what an artist can draw or can make. We do not offend, we do not insult religious leaders, religious founders. We may not believe in Muhammad, that's a right God has given you. You may not accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's a right that, God, that Allah himself, the creator, has given each one of you. But you do not have the right. You do not have the right to insult. When you insult Muhammad, you insult millions of people on the surface of the earth. Right? We need to know, we need to tell the Indian government. It is bad already that you are mistreating Muslims. It is bad already that you are so tyrannical. You are sowing terror on Indian Muslims. But now you have crossed the border. India has 
to know now you have crossed the border of India, you have gone on the wall. They need to know what is the power of the Muslim world. An estimated 30 million Hindu Indians work in Muslim land. All those idiots of the IRS think about it. You are creating hate. You are not creating love. We want love. I want you to repeat. We want. We want. We want. We want. We don't want. We don't want. We don't want. So we stand together today. When Sheikh is saying we don't want hate, what is everybody doing? We don't want hate! 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 This is nothing new. If you study the, the, the shirah of the Prophet nothing is new. So we are going through what we have gone through the history. If the Hindu think they can scare Muslim, no. Or no. any group can scare Muslim. No. They are dreaming. They don't know history. They don't know world history. Go and talk to the Templars. Go and talk to the Crusaders who flooded the streets of Jerusalem with the innocent blood of men, women, and children. They thought they scared the Muslim. They were wrong. Go and talk to the regime of Israel who thought they would scare the Palestinians. It's been more than 60 years. Palestinian is still alive and will be alive. Go and talk to our own commanders and general of the United States Army and ask them about the Afghan. Can you scare a Pashtun? No. Eh? No. Can you scare a Pashtun? No. no. So we are not going to be scared. We are going to stand up for the love of Allah and the love of the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. khair. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. I would like to call Brother from uh, Brother Afaq to please come here and, and, and say a few words of the you know situation in India. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Auzu billahi min ash rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm from Kashmir and we are facing what Indian Muslim is facing from 2014. We have been facing that since 1990. 150,000 civilians has been killed. 10,000 people are still missing. They have been taken from their houses and they are still missing. All we are asking India to give us those graves. Give us a right to funeral for those people. Hundreds of houses, thousands of houses have been grounded since 1990. This is not a new thing which is happening in India. Do not fall for this. This is RSS or this is Modi. Please do not fall for this. This is what they believe in. This is what they did in Kashmir, although it was a Congress government. Although it was a fake secular government of India. But what happened to the Kashmiris? We are under occupation since 1947, which has been promised to us self-determination, and we have been denied that. All we are asking, as in Kashmiri, give us a democratic right, which Indian Prime Minister Nehru promised us. Brothers and sisters, I would like to give you only one message. I don't have too much time. Just, you have to show the istikama. This is just a beginning for you. This is not an end. These houses will be built. Those your citizenship rights will be taken. Even Kashmiris don't have a right to have a funeral. If you speak for your civil rights, they're going to deny your funeral. Leave the other rights. So this is going to be a beginning for you guys. You have to stay strong. I have hope on Indian young uh, generation. It's a daring generation. It's an honest generation. All my hopes are on Indian young people. You will not stop talking against this. You will not stop again talking this. Although whatever they can do, they will try to force you. But you have to stay strong. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, inshallah, there was a brother, Rizwan, I think, who wanted to speak. Is he still here?
Um, I'm from America. Uh, from okay, I want to call Brother Sharif here. We have, uh, uh, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, every time we come out for protest or whenever Indian American Muslim Council reaches out to multiple different people, we have uh, always seen that, you know, all different uh, cultures, people, different uh, t uh, Tamil Muslims, you know, Malayalam Muslims and you know, so many different people, they all join us, Alhamdulillah, from Kerala also. So I have the privilege of having Brother Sharif here from Tamil Nadu Muslim Association of Bay Area. I request him to say a few words. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brothers and sisters, Alhamdulillah. So it's a great honor, like, you know, we had a lot of our uh, scholars and so many like you know enthusiastic people have done their part mashallah like they were very encouraging alhamdulillah jazakallah khair for everyone to like not join this protest alhamdulillah this is very much required so uh, what we think is it's just a protest like you know, nobody's going to care it's just going to be like you know some here and there it's not going to make any impact but if we are not standing nobody is going to stand for us no politician is going to stand for us just remember that like you know whether being like you know individual you cannot make in anything but if you come and uh, collectively like allah has protected nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam's honor allah has already raised above his ranks right allah is going to protect inshallah but what we are going to get out of this one it is our own akhirah we are going to build here when we are spending time don't spend don't think that like you know we are spending these two hours just for faith just for nothing but inshallah this particular thing it's going to be a khair for our akhirah inshallah inshallah so we have to be united we have to follow our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have to follow our sunnah we have to revive ourselves when we come together as one ummah nobody can shake us now what has happened brother said about kashmir right what has happened? Oh, it's happening in Kashmir. Oh, it's happening in Bihar. Oh, it's happening here. It is not going to be end there. Now, how many like you know people we know? Like you know, how many people are suffering in the entire world? Like Palestine. Oh, it's happening in Palestine. No. When we have the right to talk, take it to the hands in the democratic way, we have to go for it. And we try to ourselves, say ourselves, I will be there with my family. That's my for future in Akhira, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for coming, inshallah. Allah Akbar! Takbir! Takbir! Jazakallah khair, brother. Now I would like to invite, we have another, uh, you know, great personality here. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have Ustad Rashid here. I would request him to please come and say a few words. Ustad Rashid, please. From uh, He's from the Afghanistan. Uh, what a great occasion. What greater can an occasion be than to come and defend the Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi wa Alayhi wa Sallam? Alhamdulillah. The one that Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala praises in reality does not need praise but when we praise him we are only elevating ourselves alhamdulillah say subhanallah 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 alhamdulillah alhamdulillah allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar anybody that just not only studies the life of the Prophet وسلم, but only just looks at one occasion in his life and that was his farewell speech. His farewell speech speaks to every single ailment of society that we see today in this world. Whether they have marches for Black Lives Matter, for women's rights, for whatever it is, the Prophet وسلم, encompassed all of those things in his farewell speech. He was the first man to say that an Arab is not better than a non-Arab and a non-Arab is better than an Arab. He was the first man to ever say that a black man is not better than a white man or a white man is better than a black man. I dare and challenge anybody to find a quote that predates Muhammad وسلم, in these sayings. Even Aristotle believed in a caste system. 
but he is the Prophet وسلم, divinely, divinely inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one of the things is, in this day and age, there is, this is not a war of, of men and a war of weapons, because there's so many countries, they all have nuclear weapons, anyone could take anybody out. Doesn't matter, it's a war of ideology. This is a war of ideology. Why is it that when France has a pop took over Algeria and they had a population of less than 1% of Muslims, but in their Congress they sat and discussed one thing, how to, to, to uh, not to have women allowed to have hijab. Why does a Congress sit down and discuss a minority population to let not let women have hijab? Why? Because it's an attack. It's a symbol, and when you attack the Prophet Sallallahu you're attacking two billion Muslims. But again, this is an ideology, and what they want is when they do these things, when they draw these cartoons, just like Jim Crow in this country, if you draw a caricature of an African-American person in a bad light, you will see it posted in every single newspaper and in the media, and they will talk against it. But when they draw the Prophet Wasallam, they say not one thing, and they call on it and say it's freedom of speech. If they say it's freedom. So this is an ideology, and the people that are doing this, and the people that actually, even Putin, even Vladimir Putin, Go on YouTube and look it up. He defends the Prophet Sallallahu and he says anybody that talks about him is an ignorant, ignorant person. Even he understands that. To, to put down two billion people. Now as an ideology, what do these people want? They do something like this and they want our reaction to be a reaction of violence. They want to they want to show the world. They want to show us that these people are intolerant. These so-called democracies of the world that preach tolerance and then their action is nothing but intolerance as you see it in the proof but they're scared of ideology so they're scared of islam they're scared of islam but we have to remember one thing one thing and that is that we have this is an era of marches people marching after the, the palestinian invasions of the masajid during ramadan after the taliban entering afghanistan now this we have to be people of substance we can't just stop at this. We have to write the Congress people. We have to be able to support our brothers monetarily. We have to support them with our words, with our letters, with our every single being. Not just come here for an emotional stance for two minutes and then go home and say, SubhanAllah, that's it. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And I give this advice first to myself and all my brothers and sisters. And sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. تكبير 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 جزاك الله خير استاذ راشد for again re-emphasizing brothers and sisters I'm again asking you as I said earlier this is just the beginning this is not the end Alhamdulillah may Allah SWT accept our standing here in this heat just for the love of our Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brothers and sisters we are it is our duty that we have to go and represent our congressmen, our senators, our uh, our elected officials, no matter whether he is a city council member or not. But let us ensure that we are doing our job. So please, you know, we want to take down the names and addresses and and also find out who is going to be your, you know, congressmen or who are the elected representatives. And inshallah, we can go as a delegation to them. Because this is what is required. It is not just standing and, you know, uh, shouting some slogans and then going home. The work has just started. Please let us join hands. And when we say, when I send a request to show the hands, hardly anybody shows any hands. Okay, so please, please, we need your help. This is the start of it. We have given them vote. We have elected them. Now it is their responsibility that when we are hurted, they have to come forward. Yeah. Are you all with me in this fight? Yeah. Are you all with me in this? Yeah. Are you all with me in this? Yeah. Inshallah, brothers. Now, there will be a, there, there is a, a you know, a, a, a writing pad which is being cir uh, circulated. So please write down your name, telephone number, address, so that we can contact you. And then we all can go as a delegation and do the more important and strategic work. Make them accountable. Just not give them seats and then leave them off. It is our responsibility. We can stand here, but tell me how much of media is here. We are not getting any coverage. The only way we are going to be effective is now going into their offices and then showcasing them peacefully, peacefully, 
gathering people along with us who are having the same ideology. We are not standing against any particular religion as such. We are standing against hate ideology. We are standing against fascism in India. We are standing against the atrocities which is happening on our brothers and sisters back in India. So may Allah SWT accept it brothers and sisters. And inshallah I want to thank each and every one of you to, uh, you know, who have come here and, and, and stood here for the love of Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it and, and, and uh, may, Allah, may Allah forgive us if there is any sort of, you know, shortcoming which has happened. Brothers and sisters, we try to do a lot of arrangements, but if there is anything which you think that we haven't done, okay, please forgive us for this and pray for all the ummah, not only for Indian Muslims, but it is our responsibility to make sure that we are praying for all the Muslims, inshallah. Now I would like to invite the Bay Area Chapter President of Indian American Muslim Council, uh, Muhammad Javid. He is doing tremendous work. He reaches out to the people. Give him a big round of applause to him. I want to give a big shout out to Yasin Bhai, who has done an amazing job. You know, it is, it is, uh, it is his vision and, and that we should stand and Indian American Muslim Council join hands with it. So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much for all the effort which has uh, happened here. With that, I would like you to say a few words and then inshallah, yes. Assalamu alaikum everyone. First of all, Jazakallah khair everyone for showing up on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, you could have had 20 other things to do at home on a probably a long weekend. But you choose to come here. You choose to come here and you choose to stand with Indian Muslims who are suffering. They have been suffering for last 10 plus years, especially under Modi regime. And uh, while we celebrate today, I just want to bring your attention to one thing. We are celebrating June 19 today. That's the proclamation of end of slavery in the United States history. While it was uh, abolished a few hundred years ago, uh, we are also turning a page in Indian history now. The way the Indian Muslims are being targeted, persecuted, we are at the edge of a genocide being happening in India. We have been trying to bring your attention for the last 20 years to these uh, things that are happening in India. Now they have just aggravated in the last few years. So we are now, we have our utmost duty to take conscience of the situation and we need to act, and we need to act fast. We just can't be sitting in our drawing rooms and talking about or doing advocacy on WhatsApp and think Indian Muslims will take care of themselves or few people from IMC will take care of this. No, it is our each one of our own responsibility that we work for Indian Muslims. So inshallah, I'm counting on each one of you today to sign up. There is, a, as Hassan Bhai said, there is a uh, writing pad going around. Please put down your name. As volunteers, we need a lot of help. I mean, I can't go into much details. Uh, SNY has already talked about. We have been doing advocacy work at Capitol Hill, trying to bring the attention of the plight of Indian Muslims to the Congress persons, senators, State Department, White House, and it takes a lot of effort, brother. There's a lot of effort going behind the scenes that not all of you are uh, aware of. But we need a lot of hands here. We need a lot of support. So anytime we ask for support, please, Please raise your hand, come forward. We need volunteers, we need people who have writing skills, people who have, uh, uh, people who know uh, folks in press, people who know folks in media, people who can generate content for us so that we can put it out on the social media. So uh, with all said that, that uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the uh, organizers here along with uh, the Bay Area chapter of IAMC and also Yasin Bhai and all the other po folks who pitched in to make this a very successful event. Salim Astan Bhai as well. I, my apologies if I missed out your name but uh, you guys have done a great work. It's your event. It's your protest. When I say that uh, we came here to honor our prof, uh, defend the honor, it's not that. It is our honor that we came out here today to protest what's happening in India. So Jazakallah khair, thank you so much. I would appreciate if you can just sign up again and then uh, I would hand it over to Hassan Bhai and then uh, we will see you again. Uh, we have been doing a lot of protests and a lot of uh, activities going on. Uh, thank you so much again. Jazakallah khair. Brothers and sisters, we have uh, Ajit Sahi who is, uh, you know, advocacy director for Indian American Muslim Council. Doesn't it sound like a Hindu name? Yes, it is and he is defending Muslims in Capitol Hill, day in and day out. We have placed him there and he is being head on 
to the RSS guys right there saying, I am against the ideology, what you guys have. We, I believe in Gandhi, but you know, you have actually killed Gandhi, right? So technically there is a lot going on. Uh, I will definitely again uh, tell you, you, you might have seen a recent uh, statement from Blinken, right? Uh, Secretary of State. There's a lot of work which has went behind the scenes. So don't think that I'm just an individual, it's not going to happen. What is that? No. We all, if work together, can make lots of things happen. It would be very, very, uh, you know, embarrassing if I won't call our uh, beloved brother, uh, Junaid Sher. Uh, he is, I, I would like him to please come here. He always wants to be behind the scenes. But Junaid Bhai uh, is the president, he was the president of Islamic Circle of North America earlier and he had worked at MCA for a very long time. I just want him to say a few words. Junaid, please come here. I know you want to be there. No, 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 come here. You, you have to be here. Please call him, brother, because he has done a lot for our community. So, inshallah, I would like to, like him to say one word and then a few words and then we will land it. I think we're, we've, uh, we don't want to beat the horse. Uh, we've already beaten it. But uh, may Allah reward Brother Hassan, Brother Javed, Brother Yasin, all those who have uh, organized this, we need tenfold, we don't do need one, but tenfold of these kind of protests, this kind of work. We need 10 IAMCs because the work is so much, we cannot, we need 10 IAMCs to get this work done. The work is humongous. We are fighting a monster and we are nothing. But with Allah's help, because Allah is in charge, at the end of the day, He is in charge, He is looking. When the angels, when, when He said to the angels that I'm going to get, uh, you know, create humans. He said, we, we were talking, me and my son were talking, we are coming back to this protest. The angels told him, you are going to make humans in the earth who are going to uh, do facade and shed blood. And we are here, we are enough for your, uh, uh, to praise you, to give, to harm the, you know. Why are you creating humans? There is no need for it. He said, I know more than what you know. So Allah knows. He knows why he created. We are... We have free will. We are the Ashraful Makhlukat. If, if we overcome that free will, overcome all the emotions, all the bad stuff that is within us, the nafs, the nafs amara, that's that's within us, and then we overcome that and become what is needed of us, then we become Ashraf, and then Allah knows, and that's why Allah created because He knew. That there are people who are going to come overcome that and that's why we are ashraf and let us be ashraf let us be the uh, people who are above like the giving hand the hand above is the better than the hand below so we have to come up we have to rise up rise up and be above all these base things that 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 these people are doing because they have nothing they have no religion they have nothing we do have we have something to follow we have the religion we have the rules People who don't have rules, they don't act, they don't know how to act. And they act like animals. We cannot. We have to rise up and be who we are. And for that, it takes courage. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of efforts. And inshallah, we, we are going to do that. And thanks again. Thanks again for all everybody to come. And please sign up if you haven't signed up on the sheet. Because we need to support this this uh, effort, the, the, uh, the work that IAMC is doing. We need to, we have, uh, like I said, we need 10 IAMCs. But let's support this first. You know, when we when we get saturated, we're going to form another IMC. Let's support this IMC first. Salaam alaikum. Salaam takbir. Takbir. Just now, Naeem Sheikh Sahib brought a very good point before me. Brothers and sisters, the most of the funding which goes to HSS goes from, you know, our people here. We need to support, we need to support our congressmen also. We need to make sure that, you know, we are there, we are prominent, so they hear us, and, and you know, we have to maintain that relationship. So, as I said, this is just going to be a start, and inshallah, we'll move forward with that. Inshallah, we will end with the Salatu Salam on Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am privileged to have Brother uh, Zahir Khan here from San Ramon. Inshallah, we will... Uh, so, uh, you know, inshallah, we will, uh, uh, you know, end it up with Salatu Salam and Dua, inshallah. So, Zahir Bhai, please do the honors. صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه 
وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك سلام عليك فخري آه